Hi there, um, my name is Pat Fader and I wanted to run through real quick how you'd go about using Visio to create a network diagram for your capstone project. So I thought what I would do is try to make a network diagram similar to the one, um, the sample one that's in your project. I think what I'll do first actually is I'm going to make a copy of my capstone project. You'll have to do the same thing for the class. Faders final project. And then, I'm, then I can edit it and do whatever I want to this. All right, so I have my own copy. If you're not familiar with Google Docs, um, they're, you know, they're pretty easy to use. If you want, when you make your your Google Doc and then you want to share with me to, for, you know, to get it graded, you just click on the share button here, and you can just enter my email address in here, Vader P M A T C. Uh, you'd share it with me this way. Or what you could do is if you just wanted to like, kind of make it like a web page, you could hit the change button here, put it on the web, hit save, and then just share this link with me. So currently if you sent the link to me, uh, web access, I could view it and that's about it. If you uh, did the email, the default is you're gonna, I can edit it. I'd prefer the edit, um, um, edit uh, permissions. So that way, I can make it easier for me to make comments on your on your final project when I grade it. Okay, done. So in the final project, you're supposed to take you know create a network diagram of your environment, and then you're supposed to paste it right here. So this is what that's what I'm going to do right now. I've already launched Visio. I installed Visio um, Professional 2013, which you know you can get for free. Through our DreamSpark site or you know MSDNAA site. First thing, I'll go back to the beginning. So I go File, New. I want to make a network diagram. I'm, I'm going to pick a detailed network diagram, and we'll stick with the U.S. units. Okay, so now it's really as far as you know putting the components on the network diagram. You can see we've got a bunch of shapes on the left hand side here and there's different like folders or categories with those shapes. If you pick quick shapes it, it gives you like the top four shapes in each one of the subfolders. This is also kind of cool if you want to you can a lot of vendors create Visio shapes or stencils free to use. So just before I did this demo uh, before I hit the record button here I actually uh, googled Visio stencil Cisco 2960 switch or something like that and I downloaded a a zip file that had right off a of Cisco site with these with this Visio stencil on it so I can use that as well I could go more shapes open stencil um, here's a you know you can tell I I downloaded uh, it's actually a zip file I downloaded the zip file to this folder and then I unzipped it and here's my stencil for the Cisco Catalyst 2960 and they've got um, you know, you can tell they have front. They have it's like the actual. It's the actual switch, and they have front and rear um, views. Views of the switch you could use. There's different models of the switch. I, I thought this was kind of cool too. If um, they even had a rack that you could put in your diagram. So if you want an actual, you know, to r truly show what your, if you're documenting your network environment, you could kind of show people exactly what it looks like. You know, in a in a workplace. Okay, so I got sidetracked a bit, but that's all right. Let's make that network diagram now, um, as it relates to our to our um, as it relates to our capstone project. Let's see here. So I want a couple servers. Put a few servers in here. Just kind of you just basically just drag and drop your your devices. And we're going to need a switch, a couple switches, one here and one here, running out of space. And we're also going to want, let's see, a wireless access point, maybe, right? And as far as computers go, I want a couple PCs, one, two, three. So the first thing you saw is to, um, to, to add objects to your diagram. It's just as simple as a drag and drop. If you want to duplicate an object you already have, you can select it, hold the control button down, and just kind of drag off of that to, to create that object. Or, you know, if 
I want a bunch of op bunch of servers duplicated, I could highlight all of them, hold the control button down, drag, and make some more that way. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of scale everything down real quick, so I will hit Control A, or I could do a just select everything on the screen here, and I'll just drag this down to make it a little more make the size more manageable. Okay. I need to do a few things. I need to connect my objects together. I'm also going to group some objects, so I'm going to take these three PCs here and just kind of show that I'm going to add them to a single, what's called a container. So I'm going to select them all, do a right click, and add to a new container. This is kind of cool because it allows me then to even like to kind of show those show that those objects are grouped together. That's pretty. We'll go with this one. And um, and you're getting. I'm sure you're seeing right now in Visio there are there are just a ton of things you're doing, and I'm scratching like 0.01 percent of the surface with this. Um, Let's see, I, I selected this container object here. If I double click it, I can rename it. So these are, uh, we'll call it the factory PCs. There we go. If I right click on the this container, let's see if I format shape, is that what I want? Yeah. And there there is a there's fill. There's there's currently no fill associated with the shape, but there are some lines associated with it. So if I wanted uh If I wanted some nice rounded corners, and um, perhaps I wanted dashed lines instead of solid lines, I could do that. Okay, so now we can start connecting things together. I'm going to use the currently what I've been using is, what's, is the pointer tool. Use the pointer tool for grabbing. Sh you know, here I can just like an arrow over it for selecting objects, moving objects, and resizing objects. I guess I've done all that so far. So now I'm going to use the connector tool to connect my objects together. Now I've, I've picked the connector tool here and you notice that when I move over a shape it, I kinda get this like green box around it. That pretty much means if I just hold the mouse down, button down, I'm now going to connect that to somewhere else. Since I connected just to the the outside of the shape is called like a like a dynamic connection point, which pretty much means that if I move the if I move the shapes around this line might might move around the outside of the shape as well. There are some objects that you'll add that have a like multiple little. Let me delete this real quick. Pick our pointer tool, delete it. Let's go back to our connector tool. If you notice, if I go to the middle of the shape, I have one connection point, that little green box, and so that's like a, there's like a single specific point I c I can connect my connector tool <laughs> to the shape with. And if I do this, I'll go to the middle of this one too. It's like that our line is going to stay fixed to that single point. That's particularly important, not for what we're doing here, the network diagram, but maybe um, if you're doing some electrical symbols or something where a shape might have multiple inputs on it, and you want to show that you know that that the um, that the AC in connects to the you know the AC, the, the 110 input on the on the back of the switch, and that would be an example where you don't want that to move around. So. Okay, so I've got one line going here. Let's keep going with it. And this is probably the hardest part. Um, I'm trying to connect out that connection point. I used to work as an engineer, and um, you know, I just hated looking at um, diagrams where you had lines crossing over each other and stuff. So I always try to keep everything all lined up, nice and neat. There. So now the lines are all on top of each other. Sometimes if you're just doing connections. You know, I'll plop one here and then I, I go on this one here. Wait. Control Z is your friend, that's the undo. That's kind of the shortcut I use for undo. I want to go here. And then I want to go here. Okay, that just kind of bugs me. I hate having all these lines crossing and stuff. So I like to uh I I hit control Z to undo all those. I like keeping everything nice and neat. Okay, so I've showed that our switch, our our servers connect to a switch, and now this switch is going to connect to this switch here. Looks pretty good. And 
and our access point. Let's just put that over here. Our access point. Well, here we go. There's those messy lines again. It's going to bug me. I'm sure this will be nice. Oh, it's much nicer. Maybe. <laughs> I guess I. There we go. Done. Okay. So that's looking pretty good. You know, if, you get, if this connector tool is driving it crazy and you're like, I, I hate this thing, you um, the advantage of the connector tool is if you move one object, you know, the lines all stay connected. But you could also instead, if you're like, forget it, I'm just gonna, you could just pick a line here and then you could just use lines to kind of connect your objects together. And done. You know, something like that. All right. So now what I think what I want to do is I've, I've showed you how to, oh, there's a couple of things. See what I want. What I want to do now is just add some labels because part of your network diagram is to kind of describe what each machine's role is, its IP settings, and that type of thing. So now instead of using the connector tool, we're going to use a text toolbox, and I'm going to add some um, documentation for my top server here. As far as the formatting of text goes, it's kind of looks like Microsoft Office, right? It's going to be left justified. We'll have the text start at the top of my text box, not in the middle or the bottom. So it's left justified, I guess left top justified if that's true uh, as far as our, if that's the correct way of saying it. I'll go with a 9 point font. So let's see here. Um, my machine is DC1 I guess. My uh, IP address 1.1.1.1 My uh, subnet mask Actually, what I could do, I could just put it on slash ten, right? So it's a it's a class A address and with a with an eight bit subnet mask. DNS setting. Well, this guy's a DNS server. One dot one dot one dot one. You get the idea. And the other thing I could do, um, I could list the roles. So, so this machine's going to be a domain controller, DNS, DHCP, whatever else, FTP server. Okay, we, we kind of mentioned that I was just scratching the surface. Actually, a lot of these, like all of our server objects, if you look, there's a bunch of um, attributes associated or object data associated with this this specific server. And I could edit that over here. And then I could enter and go into another window and actually say, I want you to display the building property, the room property. You know, I could just, just I could tell what properties to display. I just kind of take the easy way out. I use a text tool and plop the information here. Okay. I kind of like it that whenever I move my server that this um, this um, text would stay with it. So what I can do is I can select the server and the text box. I'll hold the control button down to do that. Oops. Easier said than done, right? I'll select my text first and then I'll select my... Uh, well, let's try it this way here. Oh. I'll just try it this way here. Okay, I've selected the two objects, the server and the text box, and I can right-click on that now, and I can say group them together, which basically means now if I delete it, if I delete the delete the one, they both get deleted. Um, if I move one, they both get moved, etc. You know, also for what it's worth, um, oh here, so then you'd want to I'd want to repeat that for the rest of my servers. You can make your you can make everything look pretty cool here. Um, anytime you pick an object, if you look, you have the different shape styles. So let's say that you know this is the domain controller that costs a lot of money, so I want to make it green. I can do that, and it's um it's just sucking up a ton of energy. So 
it's glowing. Anyways, you can do you know you can do that with your objects to kind of make things look nicer. You can change the color of lines. You can change the weight of a line. It goes on and on and on. One thing that's kind of handy is you could even um, if you double t if you double click one of your connector tools, you get a label that pops up, and maybe you could label what subnet. Now this is the 1.1.1.0 1 .1 1 .1 subnet. There we go. Or I could just, or if you didn't want to do that, you could just, you know, plop a text box down to do something with it. Okay. If I want to change all my objects at one time, I could use my pointer tool again to select everything. And you just be like, you know, let's go gray. Oh, is that terrible? But, all right. I'm going to undo that. It's getting kind of hard to deal with. All right. But you get the idea. Every good network. Oh, here I, did, I guess I didn't finish connecting things up, did I? So the connector tool will go from our factory PCs. Now remember, I kind of grouped these PCs together with a container. So I'll just connect from the container to the switch. Good, done. Now, if this is bugging you, having this this is a lot. This connector tool has an arrow on the end. I could always select that. Go to my line. I think line to find it now. Arrows. Let's just get rid of that, you know, so I could do that to get rid of the arrowhead on my connector tool line. Almost done. Thanks for watching this. And I, let's uh, let's make this look better by putting a like a title page on it. So I'm working at home, so you're either going to hear my daughter my wife or my dog making noises but that just adds to the experience right so anyways let's see if I can find this here um, design yeah design I could add a um, border and title to our diagram I'm kinda boring we'll go with that one okay, if you look this took me a while to figure out but so it just added the title so you'd think you could just go and double click on it but you can't if you noticed when I added it, it actually added like a second page to our to our network diagram, and this is the page that has our title information on. So here's where I'd go and actually, you know, this is Pat's final project done. So we can go back now to the page we we're editing. So we have a title on it now. I guess you could get really nice and you could add some background if you just kind of wanted to. I don't know. Really make this look impressive, right? <laughs> um, okay, so we've made a network diagram. I've talked about how to go about labeling the different devices. I've talked about how to add them, how to connect them, and um, if you notice, if you noticed in the the, the network diagram on the um, you know in the capstone project, some of the items have like a dashed line around them. Like, you know, right here. You obviously saw you can do that. You can add a container object or put an object around it, and then just change the the line to be dashed or weighted, however you want it to look. Where was I? Was I drawing four? Yeah. So now it is time to add this to our Google Doc. Now I'm using Internet Explorer, so that I've, I've always had a hard time copying and pasting. Um, from internet from uh, from items into Internet Explorer so what I'm going to do actually instead is I'm going to let's see here I'm just going to save this as a as a, like a, a GIF file and then I can import that pi that picture into internet my Google Doc um, if you're running like Chrome at home or something or Firefox you might just want to try selecting the items right click you know do a copy and then just paste, paste those items. Just paste that into your um, Google Doc, and that should work. So that's my phone.
Okay, so let me, let's save it. And I have to say, you know, I've always used Visio 2007. This is a little more difficult now because I'm using 2013. I guess I've been kind of fighting it. So I'm, it always takes me a while to find out, find this stuff. So let's see here. Let's do file, file, save as. I want to save this to my computer. Let's save it to my desktop, I guess. And this would be faders, final. Oh, shoot. I jumped the gun. Save as. Um, desktop faders final, but I want to save it as something that um, a Google Doc can handle. I know for sure we could input like a JPEG or a GIF um, format, graphic interchange format. I'll go with GIF. I think those file sizes get really small. Okay, so I've just saved this as a GIF file, and we can go to our Google Doc, Capstone Project. That's not. I don't want to mess with that one. That's the original. <laughs> Here's the one I made a copy of. So I'm going to add my network diagram. Insert image. Choose an image to upload. Let's click on that. And let's go to my desktop. And let's look for my faders final. Looks like I could add. Let's try that. There it is. We can resize it. So what else could I have done? I could actually, um, I could have changed the orientation of the network diagram to make it look better. And I know there's also a way in Visio to save just the objects and not the actual um, title page. I think. What? Let me try this real quick. Oops. Let's um. I'm just kind of. There we go. I just I I deleted the the border and title that I had added. So I want to save this now. I'm just kind of curious to see what happens here. It's uh, faders final number two. Let's put that in the GIF format also. Save. Okay. Let's insert an image. Let's upload it. There, faders final number two. Okay, that's a little better. At least that way we don't have all the, um, you know, the title and the background stuff on it. So I hope this was helpful. Um, you know, Visio is a extremely powerful tool and you know what I you neither know, I had to relearn a lot of things to create the screencast because it was you know, things were just done differently than they were on the, on the older version that I was using and you know Google is your friend you I found some YouTube videos on you know kind of little how-to videos I am um, if you want to find out more about adding shapes and stencils if I you know I found some information on that uh, information on that on Microsoft and if you just Google, you know, find more shapes and stencils, I'm sure you'll you'll hit this page here. Uh, and and then also, like, if you're kind of excited about creating some Cisco diagrams, or maybe you're at work you're trying to create something, a lot of vendors, like I mentioned, do have have created shapes and stencils that you can use. So just you know, just Google the, the company name and you know, Visio, Visio shape and stencil or something like that, and you'll I'm sure you'll find it. There's little how-to videos on the Microsoft site as well. So I hope this was helpful, and. Uh, I also hope that you enjoy our class together. Thanks, and have a great day.